hello and a very warm welcome to Auden, sir, for quarterfinals day at the Yonex Denmark Open. Event number nine on the in BWF World Super Series. Not only is this the ninth event of the year, but it's also the fourth of five premier tournaments because the first time the BWF have created an even higher tier of tournaments, having promoted five of the 12 Super Series events to premier status. And as you can see, the Denmark Open is the fourth of those five premier events. China is the fifth and final one. And here we have the Super Series finals. The top eight in each discipline will qualify for that. Well, as I say, it is quarterfinals day, and we've got for you. We're starting with men's singles and the world number one, Lee Chong Wei, up against the former world champion, Chen Jin. Then women's singles in a battle of the youngsters. Tai Si Yung of Taipei up against Ratchanuk from Thailand. Combined age of just 33. Then men's doubles and the four times world champions, Kai Yun and Fu Hai Feng, they're up against the qualifiers from Malaysia, Hun and Tan. Then we've got mixed doubles and champion Xu Chen and Ma Jin up against the defending champions here at the Denmark Open, Thomas Leiborn and Camilla Uruta Yul. And then the last of our five quarterfinals, more defending champions in the form of Matthias Boenkast and Mogensen of Denmark up against Cho and Guan from Korea. This is the top speeds we've had so far in the tournament. And as you can see, the uh, Koreans in the men are is giving the smashes some serious power there. 277. And I can tell you that's about 172 miles per hour. In the women, well, Camilla Uruta Yul, who we'll be seeing a little later on in the mixed doubles, she heads up the table uh, there with the women's top speed. So to the first of our quarterfinals, and the players already on court. It is the world number one, the former champion. He won this title back in 2005. There he is, Lee Chong Wei of Malaysia, 29 today. Happy birthday, Lee Chong Wei, world number one. And look at his win-loss record for the year, 49 and three. And I can tell you that that translates into finals from nine tournaments played so far this year he's won six of them well that really is quite a record and as you can see his first two matches both those against Indian players and both of those won in double quick time 31 and respectively for those two matches did look to be in wonderful form, seemed to be enjoying himself, I have to say, yesterday against Pawa from India. So to his opponent, 25-year-old Chen Jin from Hubei province in China, world number six at the moment, and his win-loss record of the year translates into winning the Singapore Super Series event, where he in the final his teammate Lin Dan withdrew from that final. Now, it's interesting to me that his first two matches, well, again, so he had to save a game point in his first match against Brice Loverdays of France. He was 20-21 down, at 23-21. But look at the difference in times for his two matches, 45 and 42 minutes. So, quarterfinals day here at the fourth Premier Super Series event of the year. I'm Jill Clark, and I'm delighted to say that once again I'm joined by former England head coach Ian Wright as we look at our court officials for this first match. And Ian, just want to pick up on the point that, you know, the previous two matches of Lee Chong Wei won in 30 and 31 minutes. He, he very much a business-like style about him at the moment, wants to get his matches over and done with quickly, whereas Chen Jin in general does have to work so much harder for his... ...over, you know, a runner on court. Is that a fair comment? Yes, it is. Um, the only concern, I think, from Li Chong Wei's point of view is maybe matches were a little bit too easy, possibly. Chen Jin's been challenged a little bit more, will possibly feel a little bit sharper, but having said that, Li Chong Wei, he's got... 
sure he'll be ready for this match. He'll know the danger of his opponent, he knows the style of play. And I'm sure they've got him well prepared tactically for this one. So the world number one on his 29th birthday, getting this quarter-final underway. I do notice that Chen Jin has got both ankles heavily strapped. Now, this is actually the 11th meeting between the previous 10. This man, the world number one, has won eight of them, including winning the last four occasions. So psychologically, and that's probably has quite an impact coming into the match, do you think? Yeah, I think this year in particular, Lee Chong Wei has been in great. And Chen Jin, to be honest, has looked as though he's been missing a bit of confidence since his World Championship win in Paris. He's not really been showed any signs of consistency since then. The odd good result here and there, but on the whole, he, he just seems to have lost a little bit of confidence of one of his one of his younger compatriots going past him in the rankings sometimes that can just break your confidence a little bit Chen Long's been the guy who's been getting the results behind Lin Dan the last 12 months and uh, possibly Chen Jin feels under a little bit of pressure yeah I think that's a very fair comment and I think that's reflected in the fact that in cup finals earlier this year May in Qingdao Chen Jin wasn't even in the squad Yes, and at that point he was reigning world champion, of course. Yeah. Landed well in. Well, looking at their head to heads again, the last time that Chen Jin actually beat world number one, Lee Chong Wei, was in the semi final of the All England in 2008. And of course, Chen Jin went on to his teammate Lindan. In fact, it was his first ever victory over Lindan, having suffered five previous defeats. And there was an awful lot of talk about that final, All England final, for all the wrong reasons. Never seem to get behind that. Chen Jin. Oh. No, and it's, that, it's there, you just see. Just lost a little bit of confidence. I mean, 12 months ago, he was getting up, getting up, taking that early, and they're just a little bit tentative. Well, Seems well. extraordinary to me, Ian, to hear you in that way I can understand what you're saying but here we are we've got the world ranked number six player and you're talking about he's got a crisis in confidence it's you know that the margins I suppose at the elite level are, are so tiny that a slight dip in confidence can make a huge difference absolutely and um, there's no once he's been struggling a little bit and uh, you know even talk within the, the China camps one or two of the coaches are talking openly about it that they're having to work very hard they feel they're having to support him a lot from the coaching chair, try and build his confidence up, keep talking to him, because he really is just, just going through a bit of a trough. Convinced that uh, Li Chong Wei, I certainly remember the last time they played, which was, of course, in the semi final of the recent World Championship Wembley. And I thought Li Chong Wei came out in very positive fashion, was willing to take on the commander's role within the rallies, you know, and, and well, you know, the first couple of rallies, three points, he was, he was very much dictating the pace, but now looks as if he intent just to, to rally a little bit. He's not convinced myself whether that's the ideal tactics. Yeah, it'll depend a little bit how he feels. 
He, the tactics of Chen Jin will be pretty clear here. He'll keep the shuttle in play. He'll try and keep the tempo as high as he can. He'll play with good margins. Uh, Lee Chong try and make Lee Chong Wei work very, very hard for the points. Having said that, there's no real weapon. There's no one shot to scare Lee Chong Wei. So if Lee Chong confident at playing that pace of Chen Jin, there's no need for him to take risks and, and play quicker. So it'll be interesting to see how it, how it evolves, but it looks as though Chong Wei is just happy to play the rallies out at the moment, as you say. Can't the big upset yesterday with Lindan being beaten by the Hong Kong player. Uh, you know, I just wonder if that is maybe an influence on the way other players approach today's quarterfinals because so Lee Chong Wei, uh, he, Lin Dan obviously beat him in the Olympic final, beat him in the Asian Games final, beat him in the recent World Championship final. You know, he, he must feel with Lin Dan now out of the competition, it affects maybe the way he approaches matches or the overall belief in winning the title. I think these two players are possibly, they've been through these types of situations a lot. They're both very experienced. Uh, but I think for the players in the bottom half of the draw, which was Lin Dan's half, there's a real opportunity now. And I think there'll be pressure on those matches uh, this evening. I really do. I think there's one or two gaps opened up in the draw for younger players, and it'll be really interesting to see how they react to that opportunity. These two players, they know each other very well. I'm sure they're both focused on this, just this one match. Yeah. Of course, the Hong Kong player that beat him down was Wong Wing Key. Three games it was, too. 21 19 in the decider. And that's the difference. Chong Wei, when he gets an opportunity, he's got the weapons, he's got that change in pace to finish the point with one shot. And Chen Jin, actually, that's what's missing in Chen Jin's game, really, to make him the absolute complete player. Good. Seemed to be under pressure in that rally, and then all of a sudden, it worked hard. Was under pressure there. Had to take that low, but very good agility from that very, very low lunging position to get back behind the shuttle and hit the winner. Ability. That is phenomenal. Yeah. Great response. And again, great agility. Look how quick he is to get behind the shuttle. Made it look easy, just placed. Yeah, the smashes are getting faster and faster, aren't they? Goodness me. That could be even faster still. Certainly, the accuracy is what's doing the damage. Oh, well, all up about the 230-odd mark, aren't they? Yeah, but as you see, it's impressive. Gets up, takes the shuttle very early. Amazing coach. Ah, ah, huh? And Shuang the world champion, coaching the men's singles players from China. Six, 
hard taskmaster. He was always a, a very physical player himself, wasn't he? He still is. I've just watched him in the practice hall. He was working out one of the ladies' doubles pairs, and he looked in good shape. Oh. Yeah, he had his little sounding out period at the beginning of the match, didn't he, where he was happy to play a few rallies. Find the dimension. Oh, there we go. It is getting faster and faster. 240. That's 149 miles per hour. <laughs> well, seemed to be in all sorts of trouble, way out of position, but he's so fast, he gets himself back in the rally. Last time this man failed to get to the tournament in which he played it was 14 months ago, World Championships in Paris. Lost in the quarterfinal stage there to Taufik Hidiat. No, just wide. And Chen Jin happy to play the rally out, wait for the mistake. Doesn't worry him. 10 shots, 20 shots, 30 shots. He'll play with good margin. Great athletic ability from Lee Chong Wei. Yeah, just clips the first one down there. That gives him time to get into position for the second one. And then he steps up, puts the pace on. Goodness me, he's done it again. Well, that was fantastic because it, if we see that again, I think that was actually a good length. That's a good length cross lift. You wouldn't expect to be beaten straight down the line from there. Near 2.28, that one. <laughs> yeah, but on the line. Yeah. And then puts in the variation, slicing across the feathers of the shuttle, bringing it down so steeply. Angle. Again, very simple. You can change in work the diagonal and then changing up the pace. This time bringing deeply cross court. Oh, delightful. I know you and I have talked about this. You know, I think that Lee Chong Wei now is such a complete player. You were talking about uh, a deficiency in a way or something lacking. 
change in. A few years ago, five years ago or so, I was talking about Lee Chong Wei and saying, you know, he didn't have the injection of pace, he didn't have... He has now become such a complete player, hasn't he? Yeah, he's just missing one thing now, and that's a title, a major title. I'm sure it will come. Well, perhaps we ought to explain that a little bit further by major. I assume you're talking about either the Olympic Games or the world title. Yeah, they're the championship events yeah. at the end of your career. They're the ones you remembered for. You know, Lee Chong Wei, super consistent player. One more super series than any other player, but finish his career without a world title or an Olympic title. I'm afraid that'll leave a bad taste for him because he's certainly got the level to win those titles. Oh, nice net shot. Toyed with him in that rally. Yeah. Lee Chong Wei, that he's not scared of the physical presence of Chen Jin, and that's Chen Jin's weapon against most players in the world. So he's happy he can play the rally out, or he can play a little bit quicker. He feels very, very confident against Chen Jin because he's not scared of the physicality. Good example of Chen Jin. Chen Jin won't let go. You know, yeah. he'll keep fighting, he'll keep playing his level, but if Chong Wei keeps, uh, keeps his current level, it'll be a very difficult job for Chen Jin. Chen Jin was waiting for that, was he? No, went for the reverse slice. Chen Jin had gone. He'd gone the other way. threat I think of Mu Chong Wei coming forward really looking to pounce on the net and Jin into error yeah that's a old-fashioned hairpin net shot there gave it a little bit a little bit more height shorter and close to the net makes it more difficult to play the second net shot don't see that so much these days Jill normally see the long Absolutely superb once again from the former champion here, the Denmark Open, current world number one. He's playing every bit the status that he commands. Eight game points in this opening game. Oh, that's landed in. Yeah, that's twice. Just wonder with more people in the hall this evening if the dynamics of the hall have changed a little bit. Maybe the speed of the speed from the two ends may be affected by a full crowd. Yes, and it is a sellout. Time the judgment was sound in the opening game in favor of the world number one 21 14 in 19 minutes of play.
decided early on that it was going to go long. Look at the poise and balance. It's just a joy to watch, isn't it? One game to the good. Lee Chong Hui, 21-14. As you say, Jill, it's probably the, the most complete at the moment in the world, and it's taken him a long time to get to this level and to build his game. What, for me, would be very sad is if after the games next year, because I feel he's really at his peak, and to be honest, he's a very professional athlete, he looks after himself very well. If he's got the motivation, he could certainly years I think and maintain this level and uh, for me it would be very sad if he stops uh, after London couldn't agree more because of course we the draw a former champion here at the Denmark Open Peter Gader who in December in a couple of months is going to be turning 35 you know and here he is he's still getting through to semi-finals of world championships and doing very very well consistently Tour. So I think there's no doubt in my mind it's the same as you in that Lee Chong Wei could keep going. And such a supporter of the uh, Super Series as well. And it would be a huge loss to the Super Series, I think, in the world circuit if he was to stop. He's one of the players in the world. And you talk about his professionalism in preparing for matches. He's also very professional in the way that, as you say, he helps support and promote the game through supporting the tournaments, but also he's always got time for his fans. It's time to stop and talk to us in the media, and he's just a, a, a charming, good-mannered sportsman. Real credit to the sport and to himself. Well, certainly is getting faster and faster, isn't it? 255. He's warming up. 158 miles per hour. Puts a few tennis players to shame, doesn't it? Fastest ever tennis serve from Ivo Karlovic. 251. And this, of course, is problems for all of Lee Chong Wei's opponents. You start to think, how on earth do I get my opponent out of position? How do I uh, create a gap in the court that I can hit my winner into? Because Lee Chong Wei's court coverage is just so quick and so efficient. Chen Jin. Jin's most dangerous shot is probably the cross attack from round the head. It's a good da downward angle from round the head. But uh, the problem here is that Li Chong Wei is seeing it so early, he's reading it now. He's reading all the shots of Chen Jin from the rear court. And that's putting up even more pressure on Chen. about the slight drift in this arena and we were talking about it in the opening game shuttle flying faster coming towards us as we look down on the court right now well it's cool good Lee Chong Wei wasn't the call it'll be interesting to see you don't see Lee Chong Wei uh, hesitate with many line calls Sure, we're going to see it from this angle. 
Oh, it did look long, even from that angle. Yeah. But again, gets on with his job. Yeah. Keeps his concentration. That's a good clear from Chen Jin. Found the line. Yeah, good control. Unusual to see players making this many mistakes in judgment, which would suggest that the conditions have changed a little bit in the hall today. Just wide. Do you think Chen Jin has got to try and more moves in this match? Do you think he needs to take command of the rallies, or is that just so alien to his natural style of play that it's not a good idea anyway? No, I think he's got to be true to his own style and hope that Chong Wei has a slight dip in form or makes one or two errors. I think he's just got to keep the intensity as high as he can. Keep and keep working keep working and just hope for a slight lapse in concentration to get himself into the game and he's doing that well I mean he was you know he's one four down got himself back to four all now it's a clever smash from Lee Chong Wei hit so many angles and down the line that time switching his opponent <laughs> yeah. Anything I can do. He obviously liked that tactic. Thought I'll give that one a go. Good centre smash, good shock attack to the body. It's interesting with Chen Jin. When Chen Jin won the World Junior Championships, and I saw him there, he was an inc incredibly quick and aggressive player. And the Chinese coaches obviously had a look and felt that he maybe couldn't couldn't arrive at the highest level with that style of play and they spent two or three years changing his game into a running more consistent game and took that change of pace out of him almost it's it's quite interesting the evolution of his game he was a really quick aggressive player from rear court took the shuttle very early on the net looked for the attack in all opportunities and really they've turned him into the absolute opposite it's a good rally And short. Yeah, it is extraordinary, especially when you think of the other Chinese players who have been at the top of their game, obviously Lin Dan, Bao Chun Lai, and you sort of think, well, uh, they were very creative players, aggressive players, and Lin Dan is known for his ability to pace of movement and pace of shot. And I just find it absolutely astounding when you tell us that that you know that's so different to the way they've developed other players of this era yeah maybe they wanted another style of player to counter what other countries were doing i don't know you can see with you still see it with chen jin that in defense he is incredibly quick but he uses it to respond to yeah. his opponent he uses it to counter his opponent shots rather than using it to take the initiative when he's got the initiative, he plays at one pace. But we can see in defense, he's got the ability to go very quickly. But he doesn't use it in a positive sense. It's quite interesting. It's very interesting. And, you know, I wonder, I mean, you and I have talked about the fact that Lin Dan is not 
as explosive and aggressive as he used to be. It's his playing his past his prime, far from it. But um, now that they've got Shah Ranger involved as the coaching, he was very much a, a physical player and a runner. And I wonder if he's also had an effect in that his style of play is coming through in his coaching style of the play. Yeah, that's a, it's a good point. Yeah, and I think, but I think you put your finger on it earlier on that they'd, when Chen Jin arrived, they'd got probably Lin Dan and in to their peak, the peak of their careers, both very aggressive, strong, attacking style players, and maybe they wanted to develop a more defensive type player just to counter anything that other countries came up with. I don't know. It's a very, it, but it's a very interesting. It's been very interesting watching the evolution. Of going from junior world champion to senior world champion. As I say, junior world champion as a flying, attacking, yeah. aggressive player to winning the world championships as a, as a pure counter-puncher, really. In fact, he won two junior world championships, didn't he, when it was a biannual event. So he won in 2002 and 2004. Good judgment. That's over. Nine. Oh, finds the line. That's a good angle. You were talking about the cross court Nine. shots. That's his best shot. That's that's the one. That's the one attacking shot that he hurts top players with. He gets round it very quickly, brings it down very steeply. Good shot. Certainly round the head corner than he is from the forehand corner. John Wei doesn't like the call. I have to say, we're looking straight down that line, and I thought that was perfect. Yeah, that was good. That was on the line. We're in a great position. Fastest smash of the match so far. And that's hard for Chen Jin. That's a quick smash for him. He put a lot into that. again keeping the shuttle in play yes another well, run of three straight points and it's Chen Jin and goes to the mid-game interval with the advantage yeah, I would imagine the coaching here is that Chong Wei is just playing at one pace. In the first game, he was changing the pace, mixing up the attack, playing one or two rallies, then changing up and going for the quicker attack. And here he's just got caught on one pace a little bit. He's been drawn into Chen Jin's rhythm. And he's playing a pace that suits his opponent at the moment. And probably just needs to use a little bit more change in pace.
Well, it was a very good net shot from Lee Chong Wei. And once again, he was absolutely ready to pounce, wasn't he? I think that was the problem. I think Chen Jin sensed that, that Chong Wei was there. Just narrowed, it, narrowed his margins down a little bit and made the error. to have a little bit of success. He's won once or twice with the cross attack and now he's had a bit of success straight as well. Chong Wei just has to be a little bit careful pushing up to that corner. Oh, luck of the net called favouring the Malaysian. Yeah, interesting. Again, no attack, no change of pace from Chong Wei in that rally. Content to play at Chen Jin's pace, and it was Chen Jin who had the initial. A little bit surprising. We kindly remind you that no flash photography is permitted. Yeah, and you see when he does change the pace, immediate success. Got up a little bit earlier, took it a little bit earlier. Got up here to the interception, you see he's off the ground, well off the ground, brings it down a little bit steep, a little bit quicker, and that breaks the rhythm of Chen Jin. And Lee Chong way back level. And it's good defense. Yeah. Good rally. Yeah, it's Chen Jin trying to put the pace on there. Really trying to impose a high tempo. Chong Wei able to follow it and then switch up the pace himself. Went for the center attack, the shock attack down the center. Again, very successful. Well, Lee Chong Wei just indicating to the umpire that the court needs to be mocked of the perspiration. Shuttle deflected by hitting the top of the tape. It's just a consistent rally. Chen Jin able to follow the pace. When there's no change of pace, he still looks very comfortable in the rallies, Chen Jin. It's the change of pace that hurts him. Looking very relaxed at the hotel this morning. Both you and I saw Lee Chong Wei over breakfast. And his teammates wishing him a happy birthday and I mean, very relaxed indeed. Oh, that was the 
coming forward so he could take the shuttle early at the net. Applying the pressure, that's the one. Yeah, again, it's that change in pace. Puts Chen Jin out of position, creates the space. And used it very efficiently. That's a, that's a strange serve, though. And that was a free hit for Chen Jin. Oh, great drop shot. My goodness me. How accurate is that? How quick is he behind it as well? Full diagonal. No problem. Still able to take it above net height. Look how far he's got to come. No problem. Yeah, you could see Chen Jin static with his feet. He didn't know which direction the overhead shot was going to come, whether it was going to be a slice cross quarters. Indeed, it was, or whether it was going to go fast down the line. Yeah, and he's been caught on his body a couple of times as well. He's had the full set. by that call either I'm not sure I was first instinct was it was good we've got a good position wow. well he doesn't agree does he look he's just showing thinks it was just a fraction out yeah, I'm not convinced no me neither mm. close though seeing them call both ways Oh, it's delightful. Once again, demonstrating the variation that he's got with that overhead. Yeah, great technique. Just brushing across the shuttle. Reverse slice. Feet just starting to go in the opposite direction, following the course of the racket. Shuttle going in the opposite direction. in the middle of that rally a trademark shot from Chen comes forward to the net on his forehand side he looks in one direction hits the shuttle in another and Lee Chong Wei not fooled by that I think everybody knows that one now oh, great Christ. defense oh, and that anything you can do Oh, he's missed it. He's missed the easy one. But... Well, that's the agility of top badminton these days. Both players flat on the floor. Look how quickly. That's incredible. Well, the court will definitely need to be mopped because as the players put their hands down, surface perspiration gets left on the court and then it can become a little bit slippery phenomenal yeah. look at that that's a press up recovery and there look both of them pushing up with the arms recovering on the arms incredible agility 
couple of quick points here for Chen Jin, and this will be very interesting indeed. Gracious. Oh. Well, a great rally again. Another very high quality rally. We've not seen a lot of net exchange in this rally, but both of them just showing how good they are around the net. Chen Jin a little bit unlucky, showing great reactions. Look how tight that is. Good exchange. And then a simple error on the return of serve from Chen Jin and gifts Li Chong Wei four match points. sure what happened there didn't look as if the shuttle was so far out of his reach that he actually needed to dive but well you can't accuse either of these men of lack of effort can you it's always such commitment Still another swing match points for Lee Chong Wei. Well saved from Chen Jin. Good pressure, good example of what we were talking about. To get behind the shuttle. Good power and gets in very quickly behind it. He can play quick. Like I was saying, Jill, good speed. Yeah, good speed of smash as well. Equal his fastest of the match so far. match points have come and gone one remains for Lee Chong Wei This time, Lee Chong Wei closes out the match. His fourth match point. Hardly looks out of breath, does he? Goodness me, 48 minutes of play. And the world number one, Lee Chong Wei, progresses through to the semi final. Oh my goodness, he had to work hard for it. As all opponents Chen Jin, because Chen Jin is such a fighter on court. Glorious movements. Knew that it was going wide. Then their confirmation 21 14, 21 19 in 48 minutes. So the world number one, Lee Chong Wei. Fifth consecutive over Chen Jin.
Ian, it really was a very impressive performance from Lee Chong Wei. Yeah, he just had the feeling he was playing within himself, didn't he? First game, he showed a lot of change of pace, a lot of aggression, looking for some quick points, mixing it up with the longer rallies. Game, he was just happy to be patient, felt he didn't need to change the tempo, felt he was in control. It looks as though there's a little bit more to come this week. Pretty sure with Lindan Lin Dan out, he'll be looking for revenge with Chen Long. He'll be looking forward maybe to correcting that last match between the two of them. If, of course, they both get that far, opposite ends of the draw. Lee Chong Wei and Chen Long. And just to expand on Ian's comment there, Wei beaten in the final of the Japan Open by Chen Long. Chen Long has won the last two Super Series events, the China's Masters, and also the Japan Open. So that confirms Lee Chong Wei through to the semi. -final. He knows that he will have a Danish opponent because it's an all Danish affair in that quarterfinal. Peter Gaida up against the 17 year old Victor Axelson, who, of course, is the reigning world junior champion. And I can tell you in the bottom half of the draw, Chen Lo has gone through to the semi final because sadly. Jan Jorgensen unable to contest today's quarterfinal health issues for him and we shall uh, be able to bring you up to date as soon as that uh, match at the bottom of the draw between Sho Suzaki and Wong Winky of Hong Kong as you can see very very early stages in the opening game there that's on the far court court number three 